Uh, so um, I hope uh, I hope it's been an interesting conversation that you've been having with each other, and um, I'm really really interested to, to kind of find out what's going to come out of those conversations. Um, we're just going to do it, you know, from the floor. We know uh, there's Brenda and Anna with the microphones, and um, just ask you to to volunteer some points that you found helpful and some points that you found unhelpful in those situations in, in you know in your life. Okay, so does anybody want to to kick off? Uh, hi, um, yeah, we talked about how actually life's a bit of a journey, and sometimes that when it can look like something bad's happened, we talked about redundancy or being out of work for a long time. Um, and what was helpful was to look at transferable skills. Perhaps we couldn't go back into what we'd done before. Um, what was unhelpful, perhaps the job market, we're talking about being made redundant during the recession times and then looking at different opportunities. But actually how that can really be a really good opportunity and you can end up going, you know, your life can take a completely different uh, route. So that was quite a positive. Um, Liz Lawson from Biz. Um, I think for me, what is sometimes helpful is to, if something is going to change or something worrying happens, I think what helps me is thinking I am going to be going up and down and up and down, actually accepting who I am, accepting that that is the way it is and going with it rather than really focusing on, on the negative and uh, and I, I think well for me it for me it definitely does help to go with feelings and just be aware that that's how I'm feeling but I may not feel like that tomorrow morning and for me that does work um hi I'm Fiona from Kent um strangely enough Angela and I um she's from Medway we've both recently gone through very similar situations about working restructures organizational change um, and both of us found the thing that was really helpful in um, our own personal journeys was to be able to step back from the situation and really think about what we wanted from life and from work as opposed to being fearful of uh, the change and the loss that uh, might happen. So we both had to, um, what we found was unhelpful with the situation was really the organisational um, mood. So having to distance yourself from how other people are feeling um, and being able to look at your own wants and hopes and goals for the future. Um, Morwenna from Cornwall. Um, apologies for the late arrival. Um, but uh, we're very similar here. We talked about individualising um, your values and being very clear on what their other colleagues have said. We also talked about um, not trying to look for a long-term solution, but look for small steps, small doable steps, um, was, um, was actually very helpful because it helped you to sort of keep control. Uh, was it, yes, for me it was giving myself space not to even think about it, to try to dis distract myself and just think, okay, I can't stop that from happening, so I'll just do something else while I decide, and decide later. So that was what was helpful for you, yeah. to be able to just give yourself time? Yeah, or not even to th take myself away from that situation. Okay. So, um, and just give yourself space, so, so you don't get consumed by, and eaten up by the thinking. So you think, right, I've got six months to think about this, but I'm not gonna think about it for six months. I'll think about it after five and a half months. Hi, I'm Andy Clayton from Liverpool. Um, number of discussions that we had, uh, there was three of us in the group, um, but one of the things that, that would really came across to me was, was about why was we doing it? You know, what was the reasons for where we are now? And is it what we really wanted? And what do we need to do to be able to change? And I think in all three situations, um, I think it was about having the support and the support networks, whether it be family or whether it be professional support, it's having that in place. I think some of the, the unhelpful things is about the bureaucracy that comes with, whether it be a learning program or whether it be um, dealing with a particular situation and the inflexibility um, that, that brings along with it. Um, and we all don't fit into uh, into the right holes, if you like, and if you're a round peg in a square hole, 
it doesn't necessarily fit. So it's being able to be flexible and uh, being able to put things in position and in place for moving forwards. Hi, um, Lynn Keats again from Hertfordshire. Um, we s much more simplified it, didn't we? We said what helped, talking about a personal situation, what helps is obviously some getting different perspectives from people or people asking you different questions to help you get to the answer you want to, um, but the one that you want to, and what's unhelpful is somebody telling you what you want to hear, what they think you want to hear, or telling you what to do. Um, again, it does depend on the person, because some people will need more help than others to get to that, but that was, we just, that was us. Thank you, thank you. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I think we've talked about um, getting information from all of people's lives, you know, so, and being able to talk things through is about getting different perspectives. And, you know, as an advisor, you are there to sort of offer different points of view. Um, Brenda, Anna, if you think of anything, you know, I know I'm doing a little talk, <laughs> but if you want to add something or comment on what people say, please feel free to do that. Uh, yeah. I just think that, that last comment was really helpful about that often what is unhelpful is when people tell you what they think you want to hear or what they think you they think you should do. And I think for a guidance worker sometimes that's actually quite hard, isn't it, when somebody is saying, don't know what to do, don't know what to do. It's really hard not to jump in when you think, oh, it's obvious what they've got to do, to hold yourself back from saying, well, what you need to do is, and actually give people the space and the time to be able to kind of get to those conclusions by themselves. So I just think that's a really important point. Yeah, yeah. yeah there are lots of really useful um, points coming out that I think really bring to life some of the stuff that Catherine and I have already talked about and which Anna and Brenda are going to continue talking with you about after lunch. So I'm sort of reluctant to stop. I'd like to just take a few... A few. Um, um, but it was just to say, having just heard all of that, I lack those skills totally. Not that any of you will have noticed that, OK? I am the person who can always tell you what I think you should do. Um, and... Catherine and others of you will know that actually when I know that what people need is guidance, that's exactly what I say to people. I'm not the person to help you with this, but here's somebody who'll be really good at helping you to find your way through it. And I think that's the other bit. For those of us who don't either have the skill set or some of us it's somehow not innate yet, um, it is to be aware of that because it really can be quite difficult and, and damaging for people if you kind of leap in. And funnily enough, I think historically, that's been the problem with lots of interventions and services for people with mental health problems. It has been this tendency at both the individual worker level, at the policy of you know an organization, um, including some that are self-help, led by people with mental health problems um, and then a sort of government department policy government level you know is this sense that you're constantly being told actually what you should do um, and yet all the evidence we have is that what we can best do is to help people think about it for themselves work out what they want to get etc so if like me you lack that skill make sure you know who is around that has the skill that you can refer people to <laughs> I think she's demonstrated some thinking skills and now she needs to do some getting skills to get them and I'll keep on at her to make sure she keeps them. <laughs> but actually, I also take up a point that I think the gentleman there from Liverpool talked about actually some of those practical things that people, you know, that often the more um, excluded you are, the more you have to deal with that bureaucracy and don't you and the difficulties of services. And that for me is part of the kind of getting stage. It's helping people... Helen said, talked about it very nicely in terms of as um, community learning providers, you can present a much more human face and try to help people unpack that. But when they interface with other services, it's also about helping them. And even sometimes that's just about helping them rehearse conversations with other professionals, isn't it? Or explaining what certain thing means or form filling in. But that's an important part of the getting stage for a lot of people. And it's about, about helping those what I called when we met before, those navigational skills that means that people kind of learn that in terms of accessing adult education, but it also means that they sometimes have them in dealing with other services and can transfer that, but you can help them, you know, learn those skills for doing other things. So it is an important point, I think, that you made there. 
Shall we just take one more from the floor and then we'll just spend the last 10 minutes just thinking about how this transfers into your into the actual practicality of the work. Hi, Helen Daniels from Wigan. Um, to be honest, a lot of what you've already put up on the board, uh, you know, we've already actually, uh, we, we were discussing uh, between myself and my partner. Um, what we did find was unhelpful, again, was people who assume, and it's, it's, it's very obviously similar to what you've just been stating about where other people who haven't got those guidance skills, um, you know, will leap in and say what they think is best for somebody uh, and not necessarily perhaps the individual. Um, we like to look at what's called like the asset-based approach quite a lot in our area. So we do like identify and get people to talk about the strengths that they've already had. Perhaps again, that's looking towards what the first person said with the transferable skills, but not necessarily the individual may uh, have actually identified them as a strength. So, you know, they are the starting points. Uh, and then it's just that conversation, really. Uh, and it's, it's a lot, it's, 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 it's a long process and having different conversations with, with the learners you know, to try and extract from them exactly where they want to be, what, the, what their own goals are, and the little stepping stones to get them there. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. I mean, Catherine, can I hand over to you for the last 10 minutes for sort of thinking about how these things kind of then uh, relate? Yeah, I think we kind of touched on that in some of the kind of questions, but I, in thinking, the point we're trying to make is that in thinking about yourselves and how what has helped and what hasn't helped, I suppose the point is to kind of reflect about actually how that impacts on the work that you do with your learners and in that kind of the stages and that's something. So I suppose that's what we we're kind of saying is mm. if you had to now think, well, how do I as a practitioner, a guidance practitioner, work with people? Can you identify some of those kind of helpful and unhelpful behaviours and actions? that maybe are influencing the work that you're doing. That makes sense. Yeah. Can I also just share something um, on information, advice and guidance, which we've heard a lot about today. There is a, I mean, you may or may not be aware of this, but there is something called a push-pull model. Have any of you heard of that? Where information and advice sits in push and guidance sits in pull. And it's a technique and it's a movement towards a coaching style rather than a, a directive style. So it's important to recognize where your information, advice, and guidance is in your organization, whether it's in the push end or you have some pull. And when you're in the pull end, you're asking people and you're guiding them towards their own solutions. Thank you. That was good. Yeah. <laughs> if it, the put, it sits in, it's a, it's a linear line. So from directive to non-directive, with non-directive being in the pull end of the spectrum and directive being where information and advice sit. So information is a directive action. You give someone a piece of information. You don't necessarily interpret or advise them how to use it. Advice comes next. You tack on advice to information to allow people to mediate that information and use it. But in doing that, you're directive. If you're giving advice, you are passing a judgment to someone else, often about your own view of a subject. It's not neutral. It's never neutral. It can't be impartial in advice, because advice is directive action. When you move to guidance, you get into impartiality, and you get into tell me what your solution to this issue might be. That's a pull model. What you're doing is you're asking another individual to actually give you their solutions to their situation. And you're pulling them through your skill set to a solution that's right for them. So that's the difference between the spectrum and all the ends. Mm -hmm. And the actual difference between information, advice, and guidance. Yeah, I mean, I think that, uh, you know, that very much accords to some of the things that have been unhelpful, pe that people in the room have found unhelpful, is when people have been telling them what to do, making assumptions, um, and being, you know, that sort of insensitivity that, that, that can occur. So I, I hope that the exercise where you've actually tried to think about your own, own situations will help to sort of conquer some of the fears that people have about their ability to do this work because, you know, we all have this kind of knowledge um, and it's just tapping into that and tapping into our own experiences. Catherine, I don't know if there's anything more... No, I was, was going to say, I think that's been enormously helpful, Brenda, because I think that 
you know, sometimes people do want some information and advice, and that has its place. But actually, what we hope from today's session is we give you a kind of a broader uh, set of skills or a, a bigger toolbox, if you like, so that you can start to think about pull and, and the kind of impartial and giving people space to listen. Just as a, uh, just to play devil's advocate then, how many in people, just put your hand up, if you think that you're already working in that kind of pull space? Yeah, is that about half, is that? Is that? I should get you to kind of uh, red tomatoes and green peppers card, shouldn't I? And then I'd be able to see what's going on. So maybe about half, but you think uh, the rest of you are thinking, hmm, that's a bit of a new concept for us, really. Okay, well, that's, that's, that's really helpful for us to know, and that's all kind of part of the discussion we need to have, really. And I'm going, Christina's nodding. I'm nodding because <laughs> we have to have the same approach from phase two. We all have to be delivering, you know, having the same way in which we do it, doing it in a way that is, what we're trying to do is replicate what works. This year you have been testing out all kinds of different things, but going forward, we have to have something that replicates everywhere. So that, um, when we did that Survey Monkey recently, there was about 36 out of the 61 pilots that were doing the guidance offer at all. Do you know what I mean? So, so it, it isn't across the board, and yet it's always been part of the element. And I think a big bit of today is to get you to a place where there is a shared model for the this end of it, and that that shared model um, comes from the kind of pull end. And that for those of you who are already doing it, you may have to make some adjustments, but for those who aren't doing it, everybody else needs to help you to get to a place where you can do it because unless we're all doing it we don't have a viable project going forward for all of us do you know what i mean so that's the challenge so so if you were doing it well done but actually that's not enough the next step is we have to help everybody to be able to do it we've just had this conversation actually at work um we've got somebody delivering our iag offer who is a trained counselor and he said to me the other day, actually, I'm finding this really difficult because as a counsellor, the last thing in the world you do is offer advice. Um, but you're asking me to offer, offer information and advice and it goes against the grain. So what we actually um, have discussed doing is um, delivering more of a coaching model where we use a T-Grow approach. Um, so we're not counselling and we're not advising, but we're coaching. So we, we're kind of looking at adopting that. Um, approach really thank you. thank you that's that's helpful I think in terms of advice I mean I offer advice in terms of concrete advice in terms of if somebody wants to actually do something so if I need functional skills if I need to improve a skill or gain a skill so then that for me would be the ad, the real advice bit and what they would need to get onto that course or to what they would need to be thinking about that course to, so they've got things in place outside with its childcare, fairs, whatever that might be. So it's the, for me, the concrete is the advice that, or the advice is a concrete part. And I just wanted to say that it, it's, very, it's a very complicated area, I think, helping people because people have such, you know, are very different and have individual needs and you can really want to tell people who are not coming forward <laughs> with saying something or who are behaving in a very sort of passive way and that and that's very difficult sort of you know are those situations not to be going well do this <laughs> do this then do that then and, and you know and to recognize how frustrating it can be sometimes 